Regarding quality one, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth is infinite look like in my personal life? Yes, now these are very important questions to ask because it's one thing to say, look, God's truth is infinite. It's quite another thing then to understand how or what effect that has on your day-to-day -day life and day-to-day -day existence. Firstly, if I truly felt that God's truth was infinite, I would never feel that a book contains all of God's truth. Mm -hmm. So... I would never say such things as the Bible is the only word of God or the Koran is the only word of God. I would never say such things if I truly understood in my heart that God's truth is infinite. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I wouldn't be in this constant, uh, desire, I wouldn't have this constant frustration about not knowing everything. And in I, fact, I'd never think that I would know everything, would I? Exactly. And in fact, I wouldn't expect myself to know everything, mm -hmm. even. I would have some love for myself for the fact that I'm a finite being created by God with the capacity for growth only by receiving God's love. But as a finite being at any single point in time, I have a finite understanding of anything at any point in time. And instead of punishing myself for that or, or blame, you know, if, if I'm focusing on other people, you know, blaming them for not knowing everything mm -hmm. instead of uh, wanting a person who knows everything, I will give up all of those things if I understood this in my soul. Because I'd, I'd know that's not even possible. I'd know it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in trying to blame somebody that they didn't know everything? And what's the point of trying to feel that you should know everything? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't know everything. You're not God. You're not going to know everything. You will approach more and more knowledge if you develop this relationship with God. But you, if you are truly connected to this quality of truth, which is that God's truth is infinite, you would know for certain that there's no need for you to know everything. <laughs> yeah. And also that you're never going to know everything mm -hmm. and that there's no book that knows everything and there's no person that knows anything and nobody that you meet now or in the future is going to know everything, yeah. and so you wouldn't expect them to. Yeah. You wouldn't have an emotional uh, projection of anger or rage at them because they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't feel frustration with them because they didn't know everything. You would treat life as a learning experience. You would relax with the learning experience because you wouldn't expect yourself or other people to know everything yeah. because you know that God's truth is infinite and, and when this truth is in your soul, you then do not expect everybody around you to work against that truth. You know that everyone around you is going to have to conform to that single truth. And for that reason, it's a very good truth to know. Mm. It also relaxes you with regard to your interpersonal relationships if you feel this in your heart. Because if somebody has a different opinion to you, you don't automatically say, well, just because the Bible says this, that means you're wrong. You don't say things like that when you know this in your heart. What you go is, okay, I don't know everything. The person I'm talking to doesn't know everything. Only God knows everything. So perhaps I need to listen to this for a bit just to determine whether it's something that I know for certain is not true or, or is true by through experience and through scientific evidence and through mathematical evidence and through experience of life that it is a finish, finishing up to be something that turns out to be true. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's an element of truth in it. Or maybe there's no truth in it at all. It's just a personal opinion. But, but you wouldn't be dogmatic about those particular things unless you knew for certain and only would know for certain through the proof that you have available with you and not the proof, that so-called proof, that's in a book. Because mm -hmm. the book doesn't contain proof. It is just the writings of individuals who have written down information and it doesn't contain everything. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't contain all the truth that you could uh, potentially learn. And so in your interpersonal relationships, if you understand this principle that divine truth is infinite, you wouldn't be trying to force everybody to know everything. You wouldn't be trying to force your opinion on everyone because you would have this underlying feeling that maybe my opinion might have to change in the future. And if I've forced it on people, and, it, and, and if you look historically at what's happened, we've forced it on people through violence, you wouldn't even do that mm -hmm. because you know that God's truth is infinite and you don't necessarily know it all. Yeah. So why would you then force it upon someone else when you potentially might be wrong? Mm -hmm. 
You wouldn't do that. You would just present it and let people make up their own mind. Yeah, okay. And you said this very nice thing a couple of times about relaxing about your progress. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be fair to say, wouldn't it, within that, you're saying we're relaxing with the idea that we're eternally progressing, mm. that we're always going to grow to be looking for, at discovering new truth, finding new things. And becoming more loving. Like yeah. if, if, if God's truth is infinite, it makes sense also that God's love is infinite. And if God's love and truth is in, infinite, then it, and I can receive love and I can receive truth, and it means that I will learn more and more of the infinite truth and have more and more of the infinite love if I choose to do things God's way, but I can never say that I know everything. Mm -hmm. I will never be able to say that I'm as loving as God is. Mm. Never. So can we perfect our love without knowing all truth? Certainly you can perfect your love from God's perspective, um, but you can receive more and more love. So it's like a lot of people on this earth have this idea of perfection, which is when you're perfect, you know everything, you, you're loving with everything, you, you, you understand everything, but this is not perfection from God's perspective. Perfection from God's perspective is understanding that you're a student of God, mm -hmm. a child of God, continuously growing towards God, and getting to the point where that understanding is so absorbed within you that you're at one with God in the way that you grow. Yeah. And, and, and you're at one with God in the way you love. So your love now is the same way that God loves, but lower in capacity. So in other words, God has this infinite capacity to love. You, even if you're at one with God, will have a finite capacity to love, but the way in which you love will be perfected. So in sort of in harmony be, with the way God loves. It'll be in harmony with the way God loves. Yeah. Uh, but it won't be to the same extent God loves because that would be infinite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're not cap capable as a finite being to have an infinite expression of mm -hmm. love or truth. So again, it gets down to this quality of divine truth that it's infinite. It tells us so many things. And the reason why we've listened at first is because it actually should cause us to pause in so many ways before we start attacking other people, blaming other people, abusing other people, being violent towards other people. All of those things would stop if we knew that God's truth was infinite and I'm just a work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that, can we really know anything for sure ever? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. We will know many things for sure but we will not know everything for sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because only God knows everything for sure. But as we progress towards God, we, we get to have some truth and that truth when it does come to us is a surety. It is certain. It is fact. It is absolute. But we don't know all of it. Yes. We don't know all of what we'll, we'll learn in the future yes. in that place. We only know the truth to that point. Yes. Yeah. And this is part of the quality of divine truth. Mm. Okay. All right. So what can we talk then a little bit about the ways that we will act when we have this soul-based understanding that divine truth is infinite? And um, something I've written here is that um, you will not resist new emotional experiences or the law of attraction triggering error. Mm. Within yourself or, or exactly. me, so, I won't do that. So one of the things we understand when we understand that God's truth is infinite is we understand that we are a work in progress. That means emotionally mm -hmm. and our character is a work in progress. Now, for our character to change and become more godlike, we're going to have to release error. And releasing of error can only occur if we understand how the human soul functions, yes. which is another set of FAQs. Yes. We understand that the only way we can release error is not by trying to overcome it with, with intellectual truth, but rather by the releasing of emotions that cause the blockage to, of the absorption of truth. Mm -hmm. Now, we wouldn't then ab avoid that process if we understood that God's truth was infinite. We'd go, okay, if God's truth is infinite, I am faced with a future life of infinite growth. That means infinite change. Mm. That means that at some point I'm going to have to give up my feelings that are out of harmony with God's truth and love. At some point I'm going to have to experience them to release them. 
And so if I understand this fully, I wouldn't avoid the experience. Yeah. I, would, I would enjoy the experience because I know every time I am experiencing something, I am releasing something and therefore getting closer to God's truth on that particular subject. And I think that's a really beautiful um, place that we can reach where we, we realise, wow, this is an infinite process. And, and if I can welcome what's coming to me, I'll just keep growing eternally. Mm. I see a lot of people perhaps have a goal in mind, like I want to be clear of this thing or I want to get better at that thing. Or, well, they become, or not only they become goal-oriented because they believe that God's truth is finite, they, they believe that when they become at one with God, they'll know everything which mm. is not true. Mm. You can become at one with God and not know hardly anything, actually. <laughs> you will know how to love yeah. and you'll know a lot, but you'll not know hardly anything in comparison to what God knows. Mm. But also they do it because they want there to be an end goal. They want to be able to you know, say, rest on their laurels, as the saying goes, you know, rest, oh, I've achieved this. And, and there's also a lot of competition in the human race where mm -hmm. you know, I want to get there before you do and all those kind of emotions. None of those emotions would be present, actually, if we understood at the soul level that God's truth is infinite. Yeah, and we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't feel like, oh, when I get to this point, then I'll be happy and done. We would feel like, oh, then I'll be happier, but there'll be more happiness and more love and more truth that I can achieve because exactly. God's created me that way. Yeah. And this is where I feel there's this potential for relaxing into this process rather than feeling um, pressured or driven. Yeah, I feel there's a difference between driven and pressure as well. Like, uh, you know, to have a strong desire to be closer to God and have a desire to be more loving and have a desire to act in harmony with the laws of the universe, they're all beautiful desires. Yes. And, and I personally feel quite driven to, mm -hmm. to obtain them. Um, but I don't feel pressured by anybody to obtain them. Mind you, a lot of people try to put pressure on me to obtain them. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> but I don't feel pressured from God's perspective to obtain them. I know that God's always there helping me to get closer to God and helping me to become happier, helping me to become more loving, helping me to absorb more truth, as long as I'm open to the infinite process, mm -hmm. the process of allowing myself to change. And, and what I see people doing is you know, who don't understand that God's truth is infinite, what they're doing a lot is they, they try to become a person that they imagine God wants them to be, but God wants you to infinitely grow. So you're never going to become a person yes. that actually God wants you to be in, in, in a real sense because, because God wants you to grow infinitely, keep, yeah. keep receiving more love, keep receiving more truth, keep receiving more love, more truth, more love, more truth. And that's going to mean that tomorrow... You're going to be different than you were today. Yeah. If you and and you've got to be ready for that, <laughs> like, yeah. and and you've got to want that actually yeah. if you really want to progress towards God and if you understood this quality in your soul, you would know that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. How about this idea of not avoiding the process of emotional confrontation? Yes. Yeah, so if God's truth is infinite, and I, I therefore must change infinitely mm -hmm. to grow towards God. This means that there's something inside of me that's going to have to stretch. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to stretch and be drawn out of where my current position is. And a lot of times we're here on earth, we feel quite safe in our current position for a lot of fear-based reasons. And, and so what we do is resist the change. We love to resist change, in fact, <laughs> even if the change is good. Yes. Now, a person who understands that God's truth is infinite would never resist change. They would always want to be changing. Yeah. They would always want to be grown. They'd want it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't just, you know, they wouldn't go, I don't want to do that, you know, because oh, I, I'm happy where I am. They wouldn't do that ever if they understood this quality in their soul. But we see a lot of people who listen to divine truth doing that. Yeah. So that means that this quality is not 
this understanding of this quality is not yet in their soul. It's just an intellectual concept to them. Mm. And often um, we see people modifying their life to avoid emotional confrontation or emotions exactly. or emotions in general. Yes. So creating a lifestyle where there is no confrontation of fear or anger or things that are already residing within them. Mm. And really uh, one of the beautiful things about this soul knowledge, I think, is that it... it, it you no longer feel that way because you know, hey, it's in me and this is an infinite process I'm in. So um, I can engage it now or later, but it's going to have to happen at some point. If I want to be closer to God and if, if I want to be happier and if I want to be more loving and if I want to know more things, I'm going to have to engage the process yes. at some point. Yes. Now, a lot of people might sit there and say, well, I don't know if I want to be more loving and I don't know what I want to yeah. have more truth and I don't know if I want to become more loving. Well, that's okay. God also is happy with that too. But all of God's laws in that place are going to be confronting that particular stagnant condition. Mm -hmm. And so you're not going to have a, have a happy life choosing that particular thing yeah. as a result of the, of the choice to avoid. You're going to attract many different negative things. So I suggest to people, well, it's far better to understand God's truth is infinite, enjoy the road and, and have a strong desire to learn more and more of it every day. Yeah. You know, and, and in fact, my personal feelings are, why not put that as your highest priority every day? Because it would make sense. If it's going to help you become happier, more loving, closer to God, closer to yourself, closer to your soulmate, you know, and have a much more joyful life, then why would you avoid it? There's, you, it's only because you don't love yourself very much that you would avoid it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, something else here, if we understood it well, um, we would follow our desires without allowing fear of the possible consequences to limit us. Yes. So one of the problems that we see happening quite frequently is that people are constantly wanting the truth to be fixed. And because the reason why they want the truth to be fixed is they think that if they can set their desire to a fixed truth, then they only need to achieve that and then they can relax and everything mm. can be fine after that. The person who's truly understanding in their soul that God's truth is infinite understands that their own desires could also potentially grow mm -hmm. infinitely and, and therefore would not be afraid to express their desires even if their desires are out of harmony truth because they know that God's truth will correct it. Yes. They know that through the experience that truth will always come to them and they'll be corrected if they engage their desires inappropriately or out of harmony with love. So they wouldn't be sitting there not doing anything and using as an excuse, I'm not doing anything because I might hurt from doing it. Yes, I might personally I might feel pain. I might personally hurt. I might yeah. personally have pain because they realise that, no, every time I experience pain, I, it's just because I haven't absorbed another truth. And if God's truth is infinite, there's a lot of truths that I need to absorb. Mm -hmm. So that means that initially there's going to be some pain. And once I become at one with God in love, the pain will be gone, of course. So the pain is only the result of the error that exists within me that's emotional in its nature. That's the only reason why the pain exists. And if I understand that God's truth is infinite and, and some other qualities, I will understand that pain is only going to be present while I'm out of harmony with that love that comes from God. Yeah. Not out of harmony with the truth, because even when I become at one with God, I'll still be out of harmony with all of God's truth. Yeah. So it's all about the love or the lack of it that causes the pain. Yeah, yeah. So basically we're painting a picture when we have this soul-based quality within us of a life where we are embracing uh, change. Mm -hmm. We're not manufacturing our lifestyle to be comfortable. No. We're actually saying, okay, this is an infinite process I'm engaged in. There's no end point really. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just engage with every situation, uh, allow confrontation to happen because I understand it's going to have to happen continually actually mm -hmm. as truth confronts the error inside of me. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'll and, be... and remember that only this is only happening until we're at one with love. So, so it's the love or the lack of it that causes our pain, mm -hmm. not the lack of truth. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, I feel, a very important thing that people need to understand. It's the lack of love or the past experience of the lack of love in our lives that causes our pain. It's not the lack of truth in our life that causes pain. Mm -hmm. Because at all points of time, pain is caused. Mm -hmm. 
mm. um, through only the ex lack of experience of love. So you can be in total disharmony with truth, but have a, a, be in a loving environment surrounding you and being in harmony with love yourself, and therefore everything would be happy. You'd have no pain. Right. How can I be in harmony with love if I don't have any truth? Well, eventually you have to bring yourself in harmony with truth as well, obviously. That's a part. The two, and, and this is another quality. Remember, all of these qualities are not, um, they're not one or the other. So what we're doing here is discussing one facet of one quality. Yeah. Right? And what I'm saying with this facet of this quality is that we are allowed to be out of harmony with truth as long as we're loving. Mm -hmm. The gods of laws all work this way. They allow us to be out of harmony with truth. So we can become at one with God in love and still be out of harmony with truth, with all of the truths of the universe. Not all of them, obviously. <laughs> we could be out of harmony with many. We're going to be out of harmony with a large variety of truths in the universe, not all of them, because we'd have already brought ourselves into harmony with the truths that need to be taught to become at one with God in, in love. love. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so we need to draw the definition of, like, and the distinction that we need to have truth to become more loving, but there is a point once we become at one with God in love and we've absorbed the truth that allows us to get to that point, from that point on, there will be no pain because from that point on, we still will be out of harmony with all universal truth or most of it because universal truth is infinite. Mm -hmm. So God allows us to be out of harmony with truth, but the universal laws do not allow us to be out of harmony with love. And we need to draw that distinction. Sure. And you're also saying that the truth that exposes the error creates pain because it's exposing the truth that we have not been in a situation where love was present. Yes, basically I'm saying that it's not the truth that creates the pain. No. It's the error that resided within that we thought was true, that the betrayal of that that creates the pain. pain. Yeah. So the pain is actually created by the error-based position, not by the truth position. Mm -hmm. And the error-based position was caused by an unloving event. In, in other words, we can have a truth or an error, sorry, we can have an error inside of us that wasn't caused by any event that was unloving. It was just something that we thought. We will have no pain getting rid of it once we see the truth. Yes. The only truths that will, the only errors that we'll have pain in getting rid of will be the ones that had an emotional signature associated with a lack of love. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that are going to cause pain. And so we need to understand that pain might be a process, but it's only a finite process. Until we become at one with God in love, then from that moment on, being at one with God in love, there is no error within us from the point of view of truth that will be painful to release because we're at one in love. Okay.